Welcome to the International News Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Dunicic. Now, before we begin today, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel. And at the end of the video, comment what you think. I love the discussions and debates we've been having in the comments section. Now, let's get right into our story today, which concerns growing tensions between Ukraine and Russia. Now, to have some context of this story before we begin, you have to have some understandings of the tensions that have been existing between Ukraine and Russia. And tensions are high. They are actually at war. The Russo-Ukrainian war has been occurring since 2014. Now, I'm not going to go into complete detail because the war has a lot of dynamics, a lot of aspects, and a lot of historical events that have occurred over the last seven to eight years. And even before that, the historical tensions were extremely complicated. So for me to comment on everything, and everything that led to the beginning of this war and everything that led to what is happening today, it would absolutely take hours and we don't have the time for that. But I will give a brief overview. In 2014, following a autonomous uh, vote in the autonomous region of Crimea, where the vast majority of people voted that they did not feel that they were Ukrainian and wanted to be independent or part of Russia, Russia decided to annex the region of Crimea. Now, this was a official military action approved by the Russian Congress and recognized internationally. Now, while the West disagreed with this action, it was an official military action and annexation of the Crimean region. In addition to this, it has been claimed that Russia has supported separatist movements in the different Donbass Bass region, which is in the southeastern part of Ukraine. It has been alleged that Russia has also sent in tens of thousands of troops to support separatist rebels in the Donbass region. Now, Russia officially denies having any troops on the ground in Donbass or fighting Ukrainian military forces with alongside with or alongside Donbass separatists. Now, that being said, President Vladimir Putin has acknowledged that there are Russian special forces and intelligence advisors on the ground to provide advisory support to Donbass separatist troops. In addition to this, Russia has openly stated that it has supported them, supported the Donbass separatists in a different way, but it has denied its military involvement. Nonetheless, Russia has been accused of sending thousands of troops in unmarked military uniforms to fight alongside these separatists. Now, currently it is impossible to prove this, but there has been quite a lot of evidence indicating that Russia probably has been sending soldiers into the Donbass region. Now, tensions increased significantly today. This past month, Ukraine has been filing many complaints internationally that Russia has been building up troops. Now, recently, over the past month, Russia has been carrying out a lot of war games near Ukraine. And Ukraine claims that these war games, war games are actually an indicator that Russia plans to annex or invade more Ukrainian territory. And the United States supports these claims. The State Department and NATO uh, outside of the United States have all claimed that Russia is building up troops and that it is planning something. Now, Russia has denied these claims and it has stated that its movement of troops, its war games, or any type of military activity that occurs within Russian territory is of no concern to any foreign actor. And that moving troops or building up troops on any part of Russian territory and Russian land is Russia's own right. And they are correct. Every country has a right to do whatever it wants on its own territory with its military. But if Russian troops are actually be, be, being built up close to the Ukraine, this is of large concern. Now, the Russian government, uh, more specifically, the Russian Foreign Ministry, the Russian Ministry of Defense, and the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service have stated that these claims of Russian troop buildups or that Russia is attempting to invade Ukraine are in fact provocations and propaganda, which are being created by the United States, by the West, and by Ukraine to make Russia look like the bad guy. And they're calling them provocations. In addition to this, they have stated that Ukraine is actually the one that is building up troops, citing more 
uh, violent or aggressive rhetoric from Ukrainian military leaders. And the Russian government has gone so far to claim that the Ukrainian government and that the Ukrainian military plans on having a military operation or carrying out a military operation very soon to take back the Donbass region or fight the separatists in the Donbass region. In addition to this, the Russian government has claimed that the Ukrainian military has been shooting uh, bullets and other missiles and other military projectiles over the line between uh, Donbass separatist forces, Crimean Russian forces, and Ukrainian forces as provocation towards Russian troops. Finally, they have claimed that NATO and the United States has provided them with these weapons, which is true. The United States and NATO have provided Ukraine with weapons to assist them in their war against Russia and their eventual, what the United States feels, eventual take back of their ter territory, or at the very least, to militarily support them with weapons, not soldiers, but with weapons, the West to support Ukraine to maintain the territory that it holds today. Now, this is interesting. One side and the other side are claiming that both are doing the exact same thing. Ukraine is claiming that Russia is building up soldiers to invade more Ukrainian territory and that Ukraine is building up soldiers and increasing its military power to invade Donbass territory. Now, to the credit of the Ukrainian government, it has stated that it is not planning any military operations or military actions in either Crimea or the Donbass region. And it has stated that it would prefer and it wants to find a political and diplomatic solution for the conflicts and to gain its territory back. Currently, 7% of previously Ukrainian territory is under some form of occupation by Russian soldiers in the annexation of Crimea or by a Russian-supported separatist movement. Now, I actually believe the Ukrainian government here. Here's the thing. Ukraine, and Ukraine knows this very, very well, cannot militarily face Russia up front. It cannot afford to militarily provoke Russia or provoke an actual war. Militarily speaking, Ukraine, even with weapons and even with general support from the West and the United States and NATO and the European Union would not militarily stand a chance against Russia. The only way that it would militarily be able to go face to face with Russia would be actual boots on the ground military support from the United States, NATO or the European Union, which it probably would not get as this kind of conflict would eventually lead to almost a world war level conflict. Now, what is actually going on? It's kind of interesting when you look at the history and the playbook of Russian tactics. Russia tends to build up troops next to a territory that it wants to invade. When it's accused of building up these troops or planning an invasion, Russian, the Russian ministry, the foreign ministry or the Russian ministry of defense claims that these claims are baseless and that they are actually provocations. Eventually, Russia claims that they were militarily provoked and had no choice but to invade more territory. So it is actually possible that Russia is planning on acting on Ukrainian territory. But we can't say that for certain and we should give Russia credit. We can't just attack the country and say it's going to take more territory of Ukraine. But there is something really interesting that was stated by the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service regarding this issue, which is actually, and I am perceiving this as a threat to the West and a threat to Ukraine. The Russian Foreign, the foreign, Russian foreign Intelligence Service stated that the United States rhetoric that Russia is building up its military or planning on invading more territory of Ukraine is similar to the rhetoric and support that the United States and West gave to Georgia before the 2008 Russian invasion of Georgia. Now that is a completely separate issue and an even more complicated one. And just to briefly give you some general idea of what the Georgian war was, it was basically a separatist movement in Georgia wanted to be independent of the country of Georgia. Russian soldiers eventually supported the separatist movement and invaded Georgia by land, air, and sea, an official military invasion. And eventually Russia would end up uh, recognizing two separate independent states in Georgia that still have not been recognized internationally. Now, Russia did invade Georgia and mentioning 
and comparing the current situation that is going on today between Ukraine and Russia to the Georgian situation of 2008 is almost a threat. And it almost sounds like we're going to invade you. But we can't say this for certain. It definitely does seem like a lot of acts are being played out of the classic Russian playbook. And there is a general theory in foreign policy that whoever is able to control Ukraine can control the world. And it does seem that Russia kind of has this belief. And Russia has always at least been perceived as having this kind of major attraction to annexing the entirety of the Ukrainian territory. But look, we can't go that far. There isn't enough evidence to say that Russia's territorial ambitions are going to result in an actual invasion of Ukraine. But the rhetoric from Russia is alarming. And in addition to this, Russia has, in the past two to three years, been uncharacteristically quiet throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and growing tensions between the United States and China and different uh, tensions and crises occurring all over the world in the Middle East and Africa, Russia has kind of stayed relatively quiet and out of touch and, and, and kind of out of the ether. And some people will state that this is because Russia is eventually now realizing that with the growth of China, the United States has another uh, rival on the world scene and that there can only be two major superpowers. But the reality is, is maybe Russia has been quiet because it's actually planning something else. And it hasn't been dormant. Russia has been building up its military prowess, increasing and investing in and developing new military technologies. There is a potential that Russia could annex or invade more Ukrainian territory. But saying that would be unfair to the Russian government. It would be unfair to their claims, which they state are their troop buildup is of no concern to Ukraine or the Western governments and that there's no reason for alarm. But it definitely means something. What it means, I don't know, but it could potentially play out in the next few months. Let me know what you think. Do you think that Russia plans on annexing more Ukrainian territory? Do you think Russia has a right to more Ukrainian territory? Do you think Ukraine, the claims by the Russian government, do you think Ukraine plans on having a military operation to take back its Donbass territory? What do you think the United States is going to do as a response to the growing tensions? Comment whatever you like. Let's have a discussion. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.